into your crystal ball, um, how do you see the next sort of um, decade or two? Are, are we going to have an entirely virtual human created in this way? Ah, oh, that's a lovely question, Jane. Um, I'm going to be very blunt. No. Now, that may puzzle people because surely it must be the case that if computing power continues to increase in the way that it is and the resources increase, then not only will AI beat us at chess and at various other uh, complex processes of algorithms of one kind or another, they will surely end up even replacing us. There will be the virtual human, not just as a computational model, but it would actually be acting like us. Well, I wrote a story about this, which I'm going to publish in a book that I'm working on with a co-author. And I call it a love story because I imagine <coughs> that Somebody has actually done that. They've created an AI brain that can be put into a human-like body. And this woman that has been created, I call her Julie because she calls herself Julie. And she's got this extraordinarily micro level brain, which is connected to her body. And, and so um, she goes out into the world and finds a, a nice boyfriend to have a love affair with. Now, how could she possibly do that? What the AI inventor has done is to put a random number generator into the brain. So she always behaves in a different way. <laughs> She's got, if you like, a kind of creativity but there's something missing. And after six months, her boyfriend notices it. He says, but Jane, where are you really going? What, what do you want to do in life? She has no idea what he means. Now, why is that? I think there's a very simple answer. That big computer I used in 1960 and your desktop today, or even the most powerful computer in the world is made of fixed components. The Microchip material, whether it's semiconductor or metal, is a fixed solid structure. Cells in the body are not like that. There is stochasticity occurring the whole time. And we use that stochasticity. We use it to be creative. 